going on there, YouTube land, and also on social media lands. Welcome to an all new video. In this video, we're going to be doing a review of a new film that just came out yesterday, June 2nd, and is a sequel to a 2018 CGI animated film that was a huge success and an Academy Award winner. So we're going to get right into that. Before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so don't miss this video and the other videos I put up. As always, people, if you enjoy my content here on YouTube, definitely check out my other social media platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all those great places, Patreon. I'm pretty much everywhere, so I and I pretty much post on a regular basis, so definitely check that out. And as always, people, let's get right into this. So welcome one and all to an all-new video. So like I was saying before, we're going to be doing a review of a new film that just came out yesterday, June 2nd, and it's a sequel to a 2018 Academy Award winning film called Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Across the Spider-Verse, yeah. So this is the sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse film that came out in 2018 from Sony Pictures Animation. And this, of course, is another collaboration with Marvel, of course, too, as well. Uh, basically giving us this, you know, better iteration and better, you know, thought process and more insight into kind of all the different Spider-Mans across all the different Spider-Man comics that have come out over the last 20 plus years. And this film actually, it was uh, really impressive actually, and I was really impressed with what they did with this film. Now, this film happens to be directed by a trio of guys. This is actually they, their directorial debut. A lot of them have actually uh, have done other animation, have done directing for other little shorts and stuff like that, have been co-directors and stuff like that. But this is their actual first directing debut as actual directors. And those are the gentlemen's names are Joaquin Dos Santos, Kemp Johnson, and Justin K. Thompson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Akeem, Kemp, and Justin, uh, I think, did a really fantastic job with this film. They really beautifully made it so interesting. They made it fun. They, you know, did a great job of iterating exactly what Lord and Miller brought to the script. And I really enjoyed what they did with the film. I was a little worried at first their direction in the first of the film. Kind of, I felt like it was going to be more of a Spider-Gwen film. It wasn't really going to be, you know, like, Mile Morales really based. But, you know, but they actually ended up turning the direction really well, I thought. And giving us a really solid sequel that I think is really up to par with the first film. Not as good, but still a really awesome film. And I loved what Joaquin Kemp and Justin did with the film, giving us all these different iterations of these different Spider-Mans that, you know, have been throughout the different comics. We had Spider-Man 2099, we had Spider-Man India, we had Spider-Woman, and, you know, etc. And in all these different types of Spider-Mans that we really haven't seen either in, you know, uh, actual live-action form or in animation form, really, uh, besides actual Spider-Man Peter Parker. But at the same time, I just thought what they did with it just made it a really fantastic and well done, you know, film that was really entertaining and just really well directed. And I thought their vision was done really well as well. And adapting the live action, too, I thought was a really clever idea, too, to bring into this film to make it even more complete and more whole. And I think that they did a good job of bringing that to life. If you haven't seen anything that Joaquin, Justin, or Kemp has directed, definitely check out Across the spider verse in theaters now. They did a really fantastic job. So this film has an amazing voiceover cast that brings their voices to life in this film to bring several of these characters to life that is just so much fun so awesome and of course you know we had a lot of people returning from the previous film and a whole bunch of new people uh, attributing their voices to great new characters that we were introduced into this film now of course a few honorable mentions are Daniel Kaluuya as Hobby Spider-Man which was Spider-Man Punk we have Isa Rae as Spider-Woman or the pregnant Spider-Woman which I'm sorry, that was just the stupidest thing I've ever seen, but, you know, some of you might like that, that's okay, I just think it was utterly stupid to have a pregnant Spider-Woman in the film, That I just thought that was really stupid, but still, uh, Issa Rae did a great job of voicing Spider-Woman, and it still was an interesting character, and then, of course, we also had, you know, uh, returning 
uh, people that did voiceovers, like, uh, for uh, Miles Morales' mom and dad, those two characters, Brian Tyree Henry, returning as the voice and so forth. And, uh, of course, it just was a really great array of these returning voice actors. So the first person, the first actress I like to talk about that did a voiceover of this film is none other than Gwen Stacy herself, Miss Haley Steinfeld. Oh yeah, Haley Steinfeld, woo, Haley Steinfeld, yeah. Oh man, I have been in love with this girl forever. She is fantastic. She is awesome. She is amazing. From her portrayal as Kate Bishop in Hawkeye to her performance in pretty much anything, Pitch Perfect stuff. St Cetera, stuff like that, her singing voice. She has always been amazing. I knew that she had a great talent from the first movie I ever saw her, and I knew that she was going to be good, and she has not let me down. Uh, she's gorgeous. She's amazing. I absolutely just love Haley Steinfeld. I've always enjoyed everything she's been in, and this is another great film to add to her resume. Now, her voicing of Gwen Stacy, I think, is really phenomenal. I thought she did a great job. I love all the different emotions she brought to the character, especially because they kind of flushed out her biography a little more in the film. They gave us a little bit more info into, you know, about her dealing with her Peter Parker and her universe, her father, and etc., and kind of her life and what's led up to her becoming a part of the syndicate in this film and being a part of those Spider-Mans and stuff like that. And her performance just is really amazing, done, really well done, and just super enjoyable. And I think that she just brings a great class to what she brings to the character's voiceover and giving us a really solid interpretation of what she's feeling. Now, another great film she was in that I think is her best performance today is who the first film I actually saw her in that I absolutely knew this girl was going to be an amazing actress is the great 2010 film called True Grit. Yeah, True Grit. Oh, yeah. Such a fantastic remake. Matt Damon, Jeff Bridges in it. Uh, great film, but Haley Steinfeld was so awesome in this film. She was so amazing. At like 14 years old, she was so phenomenal, and she just did an amazing job of bringing that character to life, dealing with having a snake bite happen to her and losing her arm, to just dealing with, you know, being in a Western times, and just what she brought to the film was just so amazing, and the depth of character she brought to her, you know, performance was just so phenomenal at 14. And I just, I, I was blown away by her. I, she just was so amazing. And it just really brought to life that character and worked and interacted with Jeff Bridges and Matt Damon and everyone in the film so well. And you really felt like she was already an adult at the time. Like, that's how her performance felt. Like, it felt like she really already knew who she was and all this stuff. And it just was so well constructed. If you have not seen Haley Steinfeld in anything recently, definitely go check her out in True Grit. It was a phenomenal performance. But like I said, I really enjoyed her as Gwen Stacy in this film. I love the depth that she brought to it. And just it was a really well-rounded voiceover role. If you haven't seen anything Hyland Steinfeld has done recently, definitely go check her out, her voiceover role in Spider-Man Into the Spider Across the Spider-Verse. It was a really fantastic job. So that brings me to the second actor voiceover I like to talk about those in this film that I just was absolutely blown away by, was awesome, enjoyed it so much, and it was just a really top-notch kind of villain for this film. And that, of course, is the voiceover done by Mr. Jason Schwartzman! Oh yeah, Jason Schwartzman! Woo! Jason Schwartzman! Yeah! So, of course, Jason Schwartzman, you might recognize for a slew of films over the years, mostly working with, you know, the amazing talent... Uh, who is, you know, has done so many great films from The Life Aquatic to Bottle Rocket to The Royal Tenenbaums. Uh, just a really great director. Uh, and Jason Schwartzman has pretty much been in pretty much most of his films. And, you know, Jason Schwartzman is just fun. He was in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. And I just love kind of the deadpan expressions and deadpan performance he brings to his character. They're just always so fun. And I just think are really well done performances that just are enjoyable and awesome. And I feel that's what he brought to his character in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse as the character Spot. And he was absolutely perfection. When his voice came on, I actually thought it was uh, a variation of Ryan Reynolds' voice. Because that's how he kind of sounded and it was on point. And he just did a phenomenal job of bringing it to life. Giving us this great performance that was so comedic and on top point for everything he said and everything he did, and I absolutely loved it. And I absolutely fell in love with the character, and I can't wait to see more from this character in the sequel. 
and he is just so amazing. And Jason did such a great job of bringing that to life. And just was so awesome. Most definitely worth the watch if you get a chance to. But another great film he was in, I think, is one of my favorites of Jason Schwartzman. Of course, is a great film from, you know, the late 90s. That was kind of like his first big film when he came to, you know, becoming into acting in Hollywood. And then, of course, the film called Rushmore. Yeah! Rushmore. He was so phenomenal. This film, his acting debut, he was so awesome. I love the characterization he brought to his character in that film. His interaction with Bill Murray and all the different actors and actresses in this film. And just what he brought from the script was just on point and so well conceived. And you really felt like he hadn't just, this was his direct, you know, acting debut. This felt like he'd been an actor for a super long time and just was so good at it. And I absolutely love just what he brought to the evolution of the character and, you know, from the beginning of the film to the end. And just everything he did in Rushmore was on point. If you haven't seen anything Jason Swartman's been in, definitely check out Rushmore. He did a phenomenal job in that film. And also, if you have not seen him in anything recently, definitely check him out in Across the Spider-Verse. He was a fantastic spot. Can't wait to see this character more. He was so good and his voiceover was pristine. So that brings me to the next voiceover actor I'd like to talk about. And that, of course, is a returning actor who did a voice in the first film uh, that plays the amazing Peter Parker in this series, known as Jake Johnson! Oh, yeah! Jake Johnson! Woo! Jake Johnson! Yeah! I absolutely love Jake Johnson from his role in New Girls to his character in Let's Be Cops and Tag. He is always on point, super hilarious, fun, and always amazing. Absolutely love everything he brings to his characters. They're always so beautifully, comically timed. He does a great job of improvising, and he just is a really phenomenal comedian, I feel. And just really, I love every character he's played. He's just so good. And he did that again with his Peter Parker. He had some of the best one-liners in this film. He had a lot of great scenes that included his now, he has a baby daughter that he's taken along with him on his cases. And is absolutely freaking hilarious, him wearing the pink bathrobe. And just everything Jake brought to the character was so fun. And the voiceover was just perfect for the characterization, the animation and everything. And Jake knew exactly how to bring the great funny, the great heart, and everything to the character. And it was just so much fun and a great joy in this film. And uh, definitely worth a watch to check out because Jake was just so good. But another great film Jake Johnson was in that I absolutely loved him in. I think it's one of his best characters out of anything I've seen him in, really, besides Peter Parker in this. It is a great film from 2017, which got a lot of slack. Thought a lot of people didn't like it, but I absolutely enjoyed it because of Jake Johnson and Tom Cruise. And then, of course, the film called The Mummy. Yeah, The Mummy. Yeah, this was actually a really fantastic film. I thought it was a really great remake. I thought that it had a lot of potential. It was really fun. And I absolutely love Jake Johnson in this film. Him playing kind of Tom Cruise's sidekick who ends up dying but comes back and is throughout the whole entire film. And he just is really awesome and just makes a great job at bringing that character to life and giving us a really fun character who has a lot of great one-liners but at the same time is creepy and just act so really awesome to it in it. And I love everything he brings to the character and his evolution through the film. And, you know, I think him and Tom Cruise worked really well together and made a really great duo. If you haven't seen The Mummy, definitely check it out for Jake Johnson's performance. He was really superb in it. But overall, I really enjoyed his, uh, once again, his performance as Peter Parker in Across the Spider-Verse. And it's just a really fantastic voiceover and really enjoyable and definitely worth the watch. If you haven't seen anything Jake Johnson done recently, definitely go check out Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in theaters now. Check out his voiceover. He was superb in it. So that brings me to the final person I like to talk about that did a voiceover in this. And that, of course, is another new character that we have not been introduced to yet and is a comic book phenomenal uh, that just a lot of people enjoy, a lot of people think is awesome, and I've actually don't, I didn't know very much about the character until I saw him in this film. And that, of course, is the amazing actor brought in, provided the voice for this character, known as Oscar Isaac! Oh yeah, Oscar Isaac, woo! Oscar Isaac, yeah! Oh man, Oscar Isaac, man, loved him as Moon Knight, loved him as Apocalypse, uh, you know, he is just a phenomenal actor that always 
takes on great roles and just makes great performances and is just always enjoyable from everything he does in this film. And, you know, he just is awesome. And I love that he got to voice this interesting character that really was a huge part of Across the Spider-Verse. And, that, of course, he played the awesome Spider-Man 2099, Miguel. And I think he did a really good job of bringing this character to life, giving us our first animated uh, you know, duty of this character, the kind of the, the background a little bit about him, and I thought Oscar did a great job of giving us what that character's evolution would be like, and kind of what he would be like from the comics or from the video games or anything like that, and I just really enjoyed what Oscar brought to it, and it just was really enjoyable and really well conceived and done by Oscar, and you know, once again, he just showed a phenomenal performance that was just so beautiful, even in just a voiceover. He just did a great job. Now, that great film that he was in that I think is one of my favorites of his is a great film that came out back in 2014 starring Jessica Chase Dunn called A Most Violent Year. Oh, yeah. A Most Violent Year. Oh, my God. Oscar was so freaking amazing this film. He was so phenomenal, so bomb. He was just dope in this film, and I really enjoyed everything he brought to this character in this film. I love the evolution from the character at the beginning of the film to the end, and Oscar beautifully iterated that and displayed that throughout the film, giving us a really solid full circle of a characterization that just worked well with everyone that was in the film. Him and Jessica Chase Dunn worked so well together in the film, and they just had this beautiful bond that felt so real. And I thought he did such a phenomenal job in that film. If you have not seen him in anything, definitely check him out. And on Most Violent Year, he was superb in that film. And overall, I absolutely loved him as Miguel, a.k.a. Spider-Man 2099 in this film. He did a great job of being kind of like the other antagonist in the film. And I just really enjoyed what he brought to the character. If you haven't seen anything recently with Oscar Isaac, definitely go check him out. His voiceover role in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in theaters now. Give it a roll, people. It's worth a watch. So what is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse about? This time around, basically we end up finding out that Miles Morales is considered an anomaly that has caused a giant rift in all the different dimensions. And that it's basically up to, you know, this group of all these different Spider-Mans to help refix that. And so that all their timelines will go back to normal. And basically we have all the different Spider-Mans from Gwen to... Uh, you know, Miles Morales, to Miles Morales himself, to Spider-Woman, to Spider-Man 29, uh, Punk, Spider-Man, Spider-Man India. I mean, all these different Spider-Mans all come together and basically are trying to save the world from this giant, like, apocalypse happening. Whereas this new threat, basically, that caused all this to happen, uh, they're trying to basically find him and stop him as well. It's a really fantastic film. I was really blown away by how good it was and how close it was to the first film. And the soundtrack in this film was so Freaking amazing. Absolutely loved it. One of the best soundtracks I've heard uh, over the last, you know, several films I've seen. All these films have had such great soundtracks that have been on point and perfect for the film. And I absolutely loved this one. I thought it was so good and so amazing. Uh, great film. Really well done. Really enjoyed it. I Everything about it was just on point and really well done. Lots of great scenes in this film, too. I mean, we had a lot of great action sequences. We had a lot of great scenes with Gwen and Miles and Spider-Man 2099, Punk, Spider-Man. Uh, I mean, there were so many great scenes. We had a lot of great scenes with Spot himself. And just overall, it just was a really well-done filming and really well-conceived. Great writing by Lord and Miller. They did a phenomenal job. If you have not seen Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse yet, go definitely check it out in theaters now. Really good film. Can't wait to own this on 4K. So that's it for this movie, guys. So always thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Also, thank you for subscribing. If this is your first time here or you have been before, don't forget to check out any older new videos you might not see mine yet. As always, people, if you want to show support for the channel, you can check out my links down below. Either from my Patreon page, where you get call all kinds of extra accoutrable you don't get here on my YouTube channel, or the awesome horror pack where you can get great horror films to your door every month for a great low price. So definitely check those out, too. As always, people, catch you in the next one.